I have another power station I want to share with you. This time it is the All Powers S200. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. All right, before I begin, I just want to thank All Powers for sending out the S200 so that I could share it with you. So this is the third power bank from All Powers that I have reviewed. And the reason I have this one is, recently I've been looking at smaller power banks as an alternative to the larger ones that are more common and which I have more than a few of. I like the idea of a small power bank to give you the option of something small with just enough power to have with you when you go camping that you don't have to consider taking one of those larger units. All right, so what I thought we'd do is just go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features, the physical and performance specifications, and the modes of operations for this unit. Then I'll share my experiences with it. Just before we take a closer look at the S200, I'll share with you what it came with. So it came with two things. One is the manual and warranty information and the other is the charging unit, so that's all. Now, as far as key features go, obviously, compact and lightweight. Again, that's the reason why I was interested in testing this unit out. Something you don't often see on small units, but does seem to be common on all of the All Powers power stations, and that is this wireless charging on top. All right, let's go through the physical specifications for this unit. So to start with, three pounds, 1.36 kilograms. Dimensions, in this dimension, 7.87 inches, which is 20 centimeters. In this dimension, 6.7 inches, which is 17 centimeters. And thickness, 1.96, which is 5 centimeters. Now, as far as the performance specifications go, to start with, the capacity of this unit is rated at 154 watt hours. Now, as for the batteries themselves are lithium ion rated at 500 plus life cycles. Now, as far as the outputs go, as you can see, there is just the one AC output. This is rated at 200 watts or a 240 watt surge and does deliver modified sine wave. We'll talk more about that in a few moments time. You can also see on the front two USB type A output ports, each rated at five volt, 2.4 amps. There is a USB type C output port here rated at 60 watts. And it is also an input port rated to accept as much as 60 watts as well. On the top is the wireless charging port right here. It is rated at five volt, one point or one amp. Now, as far as charging the unit goes, to start with the primary means of charging is this 36 watt AC wall charger, which uses the 5521 plug on this end, which plugs into the 5521 port over here. And it takes approximately between four and five hours to fully charge this unit using this if from zero to 100%. You can also charge the unit using the USB type C charging port, as I mentioned a minute ago, at 65 watts or about 59 watts in when I measured it with my meter. It takes two to three hours to fully charge the unit. Now, the nice thing is you can combine the, where is it? <laughs> the 5521 AC unit with the USB type C input and you can get this char unit charged in as little as 1.5 hours. I measured it at 99 watts input, which is pretty good. Now you can also use this with a solar panel if you have one. The max input is 18 volt or 60 watt. At least that's what it's rated for is 60 watt. But they also say in another place in their manual, it'll take up to 100 watt max. I guess what I would take from that is, get it, you know, I would not use a full 100 watt solar panel. I'd be looking at a smaller solar panel with this just for safety's sake. Now it does have all the usual protection of over voltage, short circuit and temperature protections as well. Now, as far as operation of this unit goes, it is very simple and we'll go through that now. To start with, there is an overall on off button here, which is kind of interesting because a short press will turn the unit on, but it takes a, a long press to turn the unit off. I guess that's so you don't do so unintentionally. I'm going to draw your attention to the display right here because it is simple, 
but it's effective. It actually has a good amount of information, better than I might have expected on a unit like this. So it does show both the remaining battery capacity in a percentage, as well as an icon with the segmented bars to give you an indication of just how much power is left in it. It will also show you not only the, oh, and there's the other thing, you don't have to press it every so often to keep the uh, display illuminated. It will also show you not only the wattage going into the unit, but it will show you the wattage going out, both both for the AC and the DC, which I think is a nice feature. So it's not combined into one, but it'll show you separately each of them. Now, as far as turning on the AC and the DC go, that's done from the side of the unit here. So the first one, of course, is the AC out, which you would press here, bring it around, and it will light up a little symbol to show you that AC is operation, and then your AC port is available to use. Same thing with the DC. Press the DC port and now you can use either of the two USB A's or the USB C on this side to use those ports for powering up devices. All right, I wanted to talk about my experiences using the S200, but before I do, I just want to address a couple of things about this unit that you may be worth knowing. And first off is the fact that this uses a modified sine wave output in the AC. Now with more expensive units and a lot of the larger units, including the larger all powers unit, they use a pure sine wave output. So what's the difference and what do you need to know about that? Well, for for the most part, modified sine wave is exactly what it sounds like instead of the regular uh, continuous loop of power that you might see on an oscilloscope, it will be kind of clipped at the top and down and clipped at the bottom. What does that mean? Well, for most items, not a lot. If you're just charging up your cell phones and your tablets and running devices like that, it's not gonna make a difference. However, modified sine wave is not good for use with things that have a motor. It does impact motors quite significantly. And I tested that out for myself. Now, my test was not something, you know, something that very drastic. All I did really is use a fan, just an electric fan here. I ran the electric fan off of house AC current and listen to how loud that ran and then I plugged the unit into this. Now this had the power to run the fan but you could hear the fan struggling and it was strictly related to the fact that it was modified sine wave. So the takeaway here is not to use modified sine wave with items that have a motor in them like a fan or anything of that nature. It will shorten the lifespan of your device that you're using over time. Now, in the short term, it's not going to make a lot of difference. However, as I said, for operating anything from your, or charging anything from your telephone to your laptop to your tablet, those types of things, it has no impact on that whatsoever. It should also not have impact impact on anything like a medical device like a CPAP machine. Having said that, the recommendation is, is not to use modified sine wave with a CPAP machine because medical devices can be quite sensitive to power fluctuations. So it's probably better off not to use this device for units like that. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the lithium ion batteries. And the lithium ion batteries chosen by the all powers for their units and other uh, makers as well are the less uh, desirable batteries is the way most people will say about them and the reason is is because of the shorter number of life cycles as you heard this has about 500 life cycles on average it depends on your usage of course whereas if you use lithium iron phosphate batteries they can have 3,000 plus life cycles so why would you choose a unit that uses lithium ion over lithium iron phosphate well the uh, biggest reason is is cost. Both the fact that this has a modified sine wave output for its AC and lithium ion batteries means that All Powers is able to reduce the cost of this unit and therefore pass it on to you as a consumer. You pay more for technology that delivers a pure sine wave, not a lot, but there is a difference, and you pay more for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it's just something to be aware of to help you make a decision. A lot of the major manufacturers are still li using lithium iron or lithium ion batteries as opposed to lithium iron phosphate. 
the decision is yours, of course. Okay, now as far as using this device, this is just one of those units that is nice to have around that you can take places. Now, uh, I was recently traveling to visit family and I wanted to take a power bank with me to make sure that all my devices would remain charged. This is not the one to travel with. This is not one that the most airlines will allow you to take on board their plane. Uh, you can take up to, I think it's 25,000 milliamp hours. This is more than that. So this is not one you're going to be able to take with you. So don't buy it for that reason. However, if you're taking it out for, uh, I wouldn't say a day hike, but do you know, I might even carry this out overnight if I was doing a lot of film recording and wanted to make sure that I could maintain all of my camera equipment, batteries, microphone, that type of thing, lights all charged up. It's small enough to be able to do that with and short camping trips and especially if you need an AC power output. Now I have some pretty large strictly power banks that will deliver DC only and they will do the same job but they don't have AC. So if you have something that you're taking with you that does require AC, but you still only need a limited amount of power, this is where this one is worth considering. Okay, so those are my thoughts on using this unit. Other than that, it has not failed me yet. I do like the display on this. I like its key features. I can do without the wireless charging port on top. It doesn't advantage me any. I don't have anything that I can make use of with that. Um, overall, a good unit. It's still considered a budget unit, and I can see why. It doesn't have all the features and bells and whistles of the more expensive units. So if you're looking for a budget unit that is small in size, and has capability, but not all the stuff that the more expensive units have, it's just one worth taking a look at. Okay, that's everything I have for you today. What I'll do, of course, is put all the information I've given you in the video description below, as well as the links to where you can take another look at this unit. But in, and if you have any comments or questions, of course, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.